let's talk about the nature of stationary points so we've already covered that stationary point of course if you've got a curve like that stationary points are critical points where the dy dx is equal to zero so we already covered why they are called stationary points that's because the function is never increasing or decreasing at that point and the derivative is equal to zero so those are called stationary points so the stationary points can either be a maxima it can be a minima point it can also be a point of inflation where there is change okay like that so one thing that we need to know is for the maxima the second derivative the second derivative is basically equal to greater than zero right no actually less okay and then for the minima the second derivative is the second derivative is greater than zero and then of course a point where the second derivative is equal to zero that's a case that we call the point of inflation so that's how we determine the nature of it. So now we use the second derivative as a testing tool. So let's consider a case where we've got uh, a simple cubic function. Y is equal to x to the power 3. So of course determining the nature of uh, the stationary points is very important as we sketch the graph. It helps us. So let's try to understand how. So dy dx so the second we need first of all to find the first derivative to help us determine these stationary points as usual we understand so the derivative there is going to be 3x squared plus 12x plus 9 so we have our first derivative or our derivative function so we understand that stationary points are critical points where dy dx is equal to 0 so we can equate this to 0 meaning that we can solve it the normal way we solve a quadratic function so of course we know 3 is common there if you factor it out you're going to be with x squared plus 4x plus what plus a 3 equal to 0 so if we try to factorize what we have inside there we're going to have x plus 1 and then x plus 3 so if you want you can use any formula so the critical points are x is equal to negative 1 x is equal to negative 3 so these are the critical points so we know these are the stationary points those are the points where the the curve is going to be or the derivative of the curve is going to be equal to 0 so of course you know you can find the y coordinate by substituting back into the original function I believe that is known if you are told to find the stationary points now in this case we're interested in determining whether the negative 1 stationary point and the negative 3 stationary points are minimal or maxima points so how do you go about that so we can now determine what we call the second derivative okay we we'll have to determine now what we call the second derivative I don't want us to use the, of course there are other things that we can try to work with to estimate we can use the aspect of increasing and decreasing and all but let's try to use the second derivative test so going directly what we you need to expect here is a second derivative <coughs> is going to be differentiate the first derivative so if you differentiate this we're going to have 6x plus 12 so that's what we have so let's try to equate uh, let's try to substitute these stationary points so if you put the negative one where there's x you're going to have negative 6 plus 12 which gives us a positive 6 and then if plug in negative 3 you're going to have negative 18 plus 12 which gives us negative 6 so negative 1 is giving us a positive value and then the other one is giving us a negative value so in a case where the second derivative is positive that is a minima point that's a minima point and then of course for the other one it's opposite when it's negative it's a maximum point so if you want to find the point of inversion, equate the second derivative to 0. So 6x is equal to negative 12. So x is equal to negative 2. So at x is equal to negative 2, that's your point of inversion. Okay. So to, to just give you an idea on why this is important to work with. 
So this is important because when you, you are asked to sketch such a graph, it's going to be faster and will make things easier. So you already know that you have a point negative 1 somewhere there, and then you also have a point negative 3. Now, of course, you can substitute into the function to get the y coordinates, but one thing that we know is negative 3 is a maxima. So we expect it to be somewhere there. Negative 1 is a minima, something something like that. And then we negative 2, which is in between, has been determined the point of inflation. So you can also substitute in that function to get the y coordinate, but we can consider it to be something like that. So obviously, if we try to sketch, this graph would come out like that. Okay, and then at this point it will start changing like that. So I've not drawn the point of inflation properly. So it could be something like this. Okay, so at, at that point where there's a change between the the decreasing part from the maximum point and then the decreasing part towards the minimum point, this is called the point of inflation. So negative one is the minima negative 3 is the maxima. So we can find the y coordinate at that point by substituting into that function. So I think you've seen that this is how important now. Um, but of course, from the look of things itself, if you look at the curve itself, it tells us the y-intercept is 4. So obviously, it will cut somewhere at 4. Yes. So this is just like trying to estimate without the actual usage of the y-values that you can determine using the curve. So this is how calculus and determining the nature of the stationary points helps us to sketch a curve faster and simpler.